nonchalant, what you want, I'm investing in anything that can get me to the paper. You stay salty, I'm a user for the flavor. Abracadabra, I do magic like the Laker. Dang, you creeping in the dark and it ain't laser. Tag, you probably even wouldn't help a stranger. Like there's no benefit to learning other language. It's obvious everybody need to save it. Let's break Bible it's study. What's up, everybody? Know they Let's go. It's obvious people on their best behavior. Hey. Until it's time to do your enemy your favor. It might be worth it to first just consider prayer. Listen to the word. I'm perfect. I ain't doing nothing either. I serve to my kids and that's something major. Unless I never teach them how to love the neighbor. Hello, neighbor. How are you? Hey. I really want to shower you. I just want to shout you with love. Come on, let's go, let's go. Hello, neighbor, how are you? I just want to shout you with love. Yeah. Shout out to Believe. I'm like let's go. I just meet Black Thought. Shouldn't have made it. I'm a blindfolded half court. Shout out hey. to the way to the goat. But I'd rather be. Let's pray Bible study. Because the greatest of all time. Don't get jealous. Hey. Don't get jealous. I, I got a carrot right there. <laughs> I missed them up, but never took the time to hey. end. Y'all want the world to change. Instead of changing myself, man, that's all the game. Hey. I should start with the man in the mirror, right? And handle it down to all my Shout out to West Virginia. Like being a blessing to people. Hey. Are looking out for people who try and hurt you. Italy in the it's building. To love the people hey. the I'd rather be around the ones that help me keep my curfew. Mm -hmm. So when the sun sets on my life, I hope the people around me feel like that I love them, right? Hello, neighbor. How are you? How are you? Really wanna shower Show you. With love. Shower your neighbor with love, y'all. Come on, come on, let's go. Hello, neighbor, how are you? Let's go. Really wanna challenge you to love. Shower your neighbor with love. Let's go. Hey, hey. Shout out to Belief. Uh, that's called Love Thy Neighbor. Uh, on the hook singing was Yasmin Hendrix. Yeah. So uh, today's message uh, is called, let me write that in real quick. Friend. And let's see, I did three ends. <laughs> and neighbor. That's right, friend and neighbor. Hallelujah. Friend and neighbor. Today's message is called Friend and Neighbor. It's lunch break Bible study. I'm going to get right into it. Make sure you get your lunch. I'm going to pray over your lunches real quick. Heavenly Father, I just pray for everyone right now uh, that they are blessed from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. And that they uh, are filled with joy. And also, too, uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to ask right now that you bless the hands that made their food, wherever they got it, whether they got it at fast food or they made it themselves. Bless the hands that made that food. And the food is going to bless them with nourishment. Hallelujah. And uh, I pray right now that uh, this lunch break will be a praise break for them and help them in their life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, Lunch break Bible study, you know, it's, uh, it's like 30 minutes, a little bit over 30 minutes, but not a full hour. And it's just us coming together saying, hey, Heavenly Father, I want to show you love in the middle of my day, just in the middle of my day. So that way I can like get back into the Holy Spirit and you help me with the rest of my day. That's all it's saying. So uh, I love lunch break Bible study. So let's get into it. Mm, mm. Shout out to Believe That Was Love Thy Neighbor. Uh, yeah. So let's get into it. What is a friend? All right. Cause the name of this message is called friend and neighbor. So what is a friend to you? You know, like, uh, you can have Facebook friends, right? You can have friends on Instagram, which is what we own right now. <laughs> right. And you might feel like that's your friends. You know what I'm saying? You know, people follow you online. You follow them, um, they read your posts, you read their posts, so that could feel like a friend. You might get to know someone really well that way, but you don't get to know them like really, really seriously know them, but at least you know the version of them that they post on the internet, and friendships do develop from that, right? Um, positive ones, right? So are, are the ones that are healthy. So then there's, uh, that probably doesn't, you know, pass the, the friend test. You know, as like being truly a friend uh, with social media, but maybe when you think of a friend, you might think of uh, you go to school together. You know what I mean? You go to school together. Uh, you have some classes together. 
Uh, yeah, uh, just someone lives close to you, so you see them every day. That could be a friend as well. You know what I mean? Or you can have a friend that's halfway across the country, and they used to be a friend when you were younger, like me when I moved to uh, Los Angeles to go film. I have friends in Chicago that I share memories with, that uh, I had childhood memories with, and so they're still my friends, right? So uh, we share that together. So often we look at friends as being people very much like us with the same interests, right? Or the same beliefs or the same background. You know, it's easy to be a friend to people who believe all the same things, you know, and, and believe in the same things you do. It's easy to serve the people that are very much like us. But Jesus, uh-oh, Let's get into it. But Jesus calls us to be different. He calls us to be different, all right? We are to look at each person as our neighbor. Like, look at each person as our neighbor. And, and, and Jesus asks us to love them as ourselves. He wants us to love them as ourselves. Now, while it's always nice to hang with people who have interests similar to our own, right? Or there's a, a danger in, a, 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 um, or there's an, any danger in like, uh, you know, let me try, how can I explain this? It's like, you can have a group of friends, right? And like, you know, with teens and things like that, uh, it's usually cliques and people click up like in high school, right? So you had these cliques over here and everybody clicking up. Now, it's not wrong with having a clique and people that are all like-minded and into the same thing, but don't be so clicky to the point where the new kid that comes around, that you treat them like an outsider. You know what I mean? Or you push that person away, right? We don't want to do that, okay? We don't want to do that. So the Lord shows us stories and parables, right, uh, about the big picture of loving God and showing the love of God to everyone, all right? Uh, one of those is the uh, Good Samaritan story, right? And I'm gonna break the Good Samaritan story down because it's really deep when you really get into it, right? Uh, Jesus shows us that true friendship, grounded in love and in compassion, transcends cultural and social differences, all right? A lot of people are different. A lot of people uh, might not like the same thing you like. So how do you love someone that's not part of your circle? How do you love someone that doesn't treat you kindly? How do you love them? Well, you turn to the Lord. You know, you turn to the Lord. I'm going to show you something real quick, all right? So check it out. Loving thy neighbor means much more than just the people who live next door to us, right? It means people all across the world, right? People that we meet just every day, right? We're all God's children. So when we say love thy neighbor, that means love everybody. That means treat everyone like a friend. Treat everyone like a friend. Can you be a blessing to the people that are not like you? Can you show kindness to someone that does not show kindness to you? Can you show kindness and love every time to people that are not in your circle? All right, so let's break it down. All right, so uh, back in Jesus' time, right? Neighbors were considered very, very important, all right? So hospitality was praised and it was prized, right? Uh, and it, brought, uh, and it was, uh, brought great virtue, right? So how you treated your neighbor and how you welcomed your guest into your home went a long way in communicating what kind of person you were. Right, so what kind of friend you were? Uh, people of that time also had pretty strong ideas who was and was not their neighbor. Neighbor, okay. But like with most of our ideas, Jesus decided to completely turn that upside down and let people know that everyone is your neighbor. All right, you need to show love to everyone, no matter your differences. Check it out. Turn to Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 25 through 20 uh, through 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. Mm. Lunch break Bible study. Hope y'all got y'all food, y'all eating. Because <laughs> I am. Okay. So um, Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 25 through 37. Hallelujah. Mm. Let me finish eating my burrito. Hold on. 
Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start at 25. It says, in a certain lawyer, an expert, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, uh, an expert in Mosaic Law stood up to test him saying, teacher, now he's talking to Jesus, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he replied, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this habitually and you will live. But he wishing to, oh, and you will live. But he wishing to justify and vindicate himself asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then who, who is my neighbor? Because he said, and love your neighbor as yourself. So he asked Jesus, well, who's my neighbor? Now, I love Jesus when he does this. He was like, well, let me give you a parable. Let me give you a story to help break it down. And I love how Jesus does this to help people understand better. And he gives them, give, give, gives all of them the story of the good Samaritan. Okay, so check it out. On verse 30, it says, Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he encountered robbers who stripped him of his clothes and belongings and they beat him, right? And went their way, okay? Leaving him half dead. Now, by coincidence, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, meaning he passed right by him. Likewise, a Levite also came down to the place and saw him and passed right by him, right? Okay, so he did the same thing, a Levite passed right by him to the other side of the road. But a Samaritan, okay, who was traveling, came upon him. And when he saw him, he was deeply moved with compassion for him and went to him and bandaged up his wounds and poured oil and wine on them to soothe and disinfect the injuries. And he put him on his own packed animal, right? And he put him on top of his animal and said, hey, I'm going to take care of you and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. Take care of him. Whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I return. Which of these three do you think proves himself a neighbor to the man who encountered the robbers? He answered, the one who showed compassion and mercy to him. Then Jesus said to him, go and constantly do the same. Go and constantly do the same. So this Samaritan did walk by, saw this man beaten, hurt, bruised, money stolen, right? And he gave him some, some of his own money and put him on, you know, uh, and put him on to good health, right? Helping him out. You know what I mean? Being a good neighbor, showing love to him, having mercy, right? It's beautiful, right? Now, I want y'all to check out something in this because this is really deep. Of course, we've all heard the story of the Good Samaritan, right? Even people that probably don't even go to church has heard, oh, Good Samaritan, right? They probably heard that. But here's the thing that you probably don't think about, right? Back then, in Jesus' time, Samaritans weren't like that. They weren't like that at all. <laughs> Samaritans were good, all right? So they, they weren't doing those type of things. So when Jesus told this parable during this time, it was unheard of of a Samaritan being good. So this Samaritan decided to have compassion and mercy for someone that was not like him. Mm, that was an eye opener to everyone that was listening to Jesus at that time. This man who he helped did not run with him. He wasn't his friend. You know, he wasn't a friend of the Samaritan. You know, he didn't live next door to him, but he treated him as if he did. He showed love when no one else did. And it was in his heart. That's the part I want y'all to understand. It was in his heart to do so. It's not like he, the Samaritan was sitting down in a chair and he was watching the Levite walk by and he watched the priest walk by and then he saw all this and he was like, well, ain't nobody else helping him. I might as well go over too. No, he was going about his own business. He walked by, saw this man that needed some help, needed some love some godly love. And he did that. He loved his neighbor. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> ah, it was in his heart. See, I'm trying to teach y'all something right here. Listen, check, follow me. Yeah, follow me on this. See, he was able to do it because it was already in his heart. The love of God was already in his heart. So remember, 
No other Samaritans were doing this type of thing. Now we talk about this man all the way in 2021 <laughs> saying the good Samaritan. He changed that whole outlook because he decided to choose love instead of hate or choose love instead of the way that other people were acting and doing. He said, no, I'm going to be different and I want to love someone that's different. Peep that out. <laughs> I'm going to love, love and be different and love someone that's different. Wow. Hallelujah. You must first love God with all your heart. You must look at that in uh, verse 27 of Luke chapter 10. It says, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with your soul and with your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. So in the beginning, it says, love God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and with your, that's the help that you get, that strength, and him changing your mind to his mind. <laughs> then it says, love your neighbor, all right? And, and like I said, that might be hard to do, but see, God helps us. Maintaining and increasing our love for God helps us with understanding forgiveness and mercy and empathy and showing love, treating others how we want to be treated. <laughs> how we want to be treated. Hallelujah. Okay? So you might say, hey, but Pastor Kale, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. It's not like I'm out here, uh, you know, making fun of people or saying bad things about people, but Jesus doesn't call us not to be mean. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus calls us to be a neighbor and to treat everyone that we meet with love, compassion, and kindness. Say that out loud wherever you at. Treat people with love, compassion, and kindness. Love, compassion, and kindness. That's what we need to do. Everybody. No matter who it is. Everybody. All right? Jesus turned the concept of neighbor into friend. And into love, neighbor and friend, love. That's all the same thing. And these neighbors can be people all over the world because we're all God's children. So we need to remain kind no matter what happens, all right? A neighbor isn't just the person living next door to you. It isn't just the people who look like you. Friends don't have to be people who think like you and believe all of the same things as you. A friend is one who loves his neighbor as himself a friend is one who loves her neighbor as herself. Tear down the walls that keep us apart. Tear them down. Tear down the walls that keep us apart. Show the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Yeah. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Lunch break Bible study. Lunch break Bible study. I love these, man. It's just a quick little break. You know, to uh, just get back in tune with God and a little tune up, a little fuel up for the rest of the day. So check this out. Um, if you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to be able to do that right now. All right. Just repeat after me. All right. It's receiving Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, as, as receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's what it is. It's saying, Lord, I give my all to you. I want to invite you into my heart. Now, to do that, all you have to do is confess. You have to confess that he is Lord and he is Savior and that he died on the cross and rose again and that he is Jesus. God was Jesus in the flesh. All right? That's all you have to do. And when you do that, now you're going to have eternal life. And now Jesus is going to be with you in all the times where it's hard to love your neighbor that is not being kind to you. And it's hard to, to go up to someone and just spread the gospel to them. And you feel like, oh, man, it's hard. But... Jesus will be able to help you. And when you do this, Jesus will be able to comfort you and protect you wherever you may be in, whatever you might be going through in your life right now. And then also, you will have eternal life and salvation when you die. All right? Woo! Hallelujah. So just repeat after me. Say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again. I believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus, as my Lord and high priest, I invite you into my heart. You are Lord and Savior over everything I do. And today, I am saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you did that, if you did that, hit us up at info at myspiritfood.org. 
Hit us up. Let us know. You can DM us. Let us know you did it as well. And we're going to send you more information because like I said, this is, you know, a marathon. All right. This is going to, this is your life starts now. Salvation starts now. God is protecting you right now. He's with you right now. And so you want to make sure that you're reading the word of God, that you're doing lunch break Bible studies, you're going to church, uh, and that you're showing kindness and you're understanding the word of God because the enemy is going to try to stop you from knowing that you have a victory, from knowing that you're saved now. And you just have to understand that the Lord loves you. He's with you. And we're going to send you some information uh, to help you out with that and how to pray effectively. If you want to be baptized, right? When you baptized, hit us up at info at myspiritfood.org. All right? So you just made the confession, right? So now this is an outer confession where you're saying, yo, uh, I just cleansed my inside, but now I'm going to cleanse my outside. <laughs> you know what I mean? Being baptized, right? So if you want to do that, we do that at our church. Hit us up at info at myspiritfood.org. If you also uh, want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, remember, all you have to do is ask. All right. Now, after you have uh, given your life to Christ and after you invited Jesus into your heart and you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you've been baptized as well. And now you're saying, I want to pray more effectively. Now, if that's you and you've done those things and now you're saying, hey, I've always seen grandma pray in tongues. I've seen Pastor Carol pray in tongues and I want to be able to do it as well. Um, I talked about this on Sunday where praying in tongues is so awesome. It's comforting. It's comforting. Okay, it's in it. What else it is, is that it's a direct line to the divine. Right. And the enemy cannot hear what you're saying. Right. And sometimes we don't know what to pray for. Okay, but the Holy Spirit knows what to pray for, to help us, to empower us, to keep us because of spiritual warfare out here. So we want to make sure that in the spiritual realm, that things are moving in the way that God wants them to move. So then that way we're blessed on earth. Okay, as it is in heaven, it is on earth. All right? So if you want to be able to do that, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask and believe it in your heart. So just uh, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, you said that if I ask, that you would fill me with the Holy Spirit. So right now I'm asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when I say fill me with the Holy Spirit, I will start to speak. <laughs> Oh, in your holy tongue, Heavenly Father, I will start to speak in your holy tongue and in the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. And I will receive the Holy Spirit at that moment when I ask. Hallelujah. All right, so right now, breathe in, breathe out. And say, I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Woo! Jesus. Jesus, you said that if I ask that you would give me the Holy Spirit, so I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 If you did that, hit us up at info at myspiritfood.org. Yes. And uh, if you want to be able to give a tithe, you want to be able to give an offering because, like, you know, we got people watching all from all over the world. Uh, and we also want to make it easy for you to give an offering, give a tithe. Uh, text the phrase MYSFCC to the number 833-245-7382. Text the phrase MYSFCC to the number 833-245-7382. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's break Bible study. You know we don't keep you long on these. Uh, continue to uh, eat your food. Uh, it's just a little lunch break. Uh, to uh, get back connected with God in the middle of your day. I love y'all. Remember, love your neighbor like you love yourself. All right? Love your neighbor like you love yourself. And you wouldn't want to treat yourself in a harmful way. You want to make sure that you are loved and filled with love. So do that. If you want a good friend, you have to be a good friend. If you want to be able to be treated kindly, you have to treat others kindly. Real talk. Love y'all. Love Jesus. All right, so I'm going to go out with this song, man, because uh, that song was awesome, man. Shout out to Belief. Uh, love, love Thy Neighbor song was uh, super dope. So we're going to go out with that. Yeah. <laughs> of course, they're playing the commercial because it's YouTube. Okay, there it is. <laughs> All right, let's go. Hallelujah. Love y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Let's go. I learned how to finesse. 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 I learned how to
Abracadabra, I do magic like the Laker. Dang, you creeping in the dark and it ain't laser. Tag, you probably even wouldn't help a stranger. Like there's no benefit to learning other language. Shout out to Believe. everybody need a savior. Love that neighbor. It's don't nobody know they neighbor. It's obvious people on their best behavior. Until it's time to do your enemy your favor. It might be worth it to first just consider prayer. Hey. And I ain't perfect, I ain't doing nothing either. I separate from my kids and that's something major. Unless I never teach them how to love the neighbor. Hello, neighbor. How are you? I just wanna shower you with love. Sing along, come on, come on, come on. Hey. Hello, neighbor. How are you? I just wanna shower you with love. Like Mr. Rogers meets Black Thought. Look at that body, buddy. I'm a blindfolded half court shot. I've been equated to the goat, but I'd rather be known as a sheep. Cause the greatest of all time is not allowed to be weak. And I'm lame. I make my best art when I'm lying. I love y'all. Have a best rest of your day. Amen. <laughs> I want the world to change. Instead of changing, I 